Director, I am calling this the three strikes you're out budget. And uh, it's the American people and working people who are rounding the bases, and they are being called out by this president and this administration. And I just want to walk through those strikes. Strike one was when you transferred $1.3 trillion from working people to the wealthiest in this country and the wealthiest corporations. And strike two, I'll give this to you, in this budget, you admit that that was a tax scam, that you don't have the growth to pay for those tax cuts to the wealthiest, and you're now going to saddle this generation and future generations with trillion dollars in debt. One trillion in this next year, seven trillion over the next 10 years. And then strike three is cut all the programs that people actually rely on to have a decent life. And some of these have been called out, but I have to say it again, temporary assistance for needy families cut by $1.7 billion in this budget. Economic opportunity programs, cutting half a billion from rural and wastewater programs. Cutting job training programs for workers across the country. Economic development agency that invested millions in coal communities that Donald Trump said he was gonna save. And programs that help struggling manufacturers. But I also wanna talk about SNAP because my good friend, from Alabama just mentioned uh, Kansas and Maine, and I wanna tell you what actually happened in Kansas and Maine. A year after instituting work requirements in Kansas, 40% of unemployed were still unemployed. And the SNAP participants who lost their benefits had an average annual income of $5,562. I would hardly say that that was a success. Here's what happened in Maine. 80% reduction immediately, that's true, but a year later, 60% still didn't have any income. And as Secretary Perdue himself said, SNAP is a, and these are his words, a very important, effective program. Let's talk about Medicaid for a second. $1.4 trillion cut to Medicaid. And I think this administration would like people to think that Medicaid is somehow just benefiting the poor, lazy, black, brown, who knows what you're thinking, but 11 million adults with disabilities, 70% of those folks get their coverage through Medicaid. You look at um, the number of long-stay nursing home residents, 60% of those residents get their coverage through Medicaid. So I don't know how you can call this a moral budget in any way, shape, or form, Mr. Director. And I wanna talk about two specific things that are, that are separate from everything I just mentioned. Um, yesterday when you came to visit with us, and thank you for doing that, I asked you about DACA and what, what uh, assumptions you've made in this budget around DACA. And I believe you told me that you have assumed that the DACA recipients get to stay, that there's some permanent solution for, for DACA. What I said, uh, that's, uh, that's mostly correct. What I said was that we assume that a, a, an, an agreement is reached uh, on immigration, on DACA, um, between Republicans and Democrats. I was very disappointed to see that Democrats in the Senate did not allow the debate to go forward yesterday after demanding that they do for thank such you, a long thank time. Thank you, Director Mulvaney. But we let me do just assume, point out, let me we just point do out assume that, the, that there is an agreement. I'm sorry, this is my time. Yeah. Uh, let me just point out that the president rescinded DACA and put 800,000 Dreamers at risk of being deported, and the economic impact of that is estimates are that 280 to 430 billion dollars in, uh, in either a, a cut to our GDP or an increase to our GDP. So what happens if uh, this Republican-led legis legislature in the Senate and the House, Paul Ryan has not committed to bring a real DACA bill to the floor that could pass, what happens if DACA is rescinded? Um, a, a couple of different things. I would suggest to you that it was the law that rescinded DACA and I, not the not president. That's not the answer to my question, um, so reclaiming my time to answer the question. Thank you. I'm sorry, and your question was what? Well, I, I actually think I just answered my own question, so I'll let you, you pass that. Um, let me ask you about whether you know what the suspense earnings fund is. The suspense earnings fund. No, ma'am, I don't know that one off the top of my head. Well, that is a fund that basically is earnings that are contributed to Social Security where the names of the people and the earnings and the Social Security numbers don't match. There is about $1.2 trillion in that fund as of 2012. That's about $200 billion contributed to Social Security by undocumented immigrants. 
into the Social Security that's paying for older Americans today. So if you assume increases in enforcement as you've done in your budget, have you accounted for the decreases to the economy and to the Social Security fund if that were to pass? Gentlemen, will have to take that one for the record.